Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. And today we are going to start a new playlist. And our topic is ADO.net. So this topic is uh, not very much, you know, latest and the new thing. Uh, many of you may be familiar with this, but I'm making video on this because uh, some of you may be started your career directly with uh, some ORM like Entity Framework or Dapper. But uh, this thing can be happen that we have to work on some legacy system or maybe for some small and medium project or some like migration kind of project, we have to work or deal with this technology that we call the ATO.net. So I'm making this video for all my like uh, viewers who have not, uh, you know, a basic knowledge of this ADO.net. So I will be trying it, uh, you know, to making a crash course. Uh, I will be trying to wrap up all the, you know, fundamentals and the advanced topic of the ADO.net in my this playlist. And one more thing that can be happen that uh, when you, if you go for the interview, maybe the interviewer can ask you about this technology as well. So. I hope this uh, video will be, you know, this video series will be helpful for all of us. So let's start this for the ADO.net. Uh, basically, the ADO full form is the Microsoft ActiveX data object. So uh, it is used to communicate uh, the different data source like XML, SQL, Oracle, and so many different kind of data sources. Or you mean you mean by uh, database? An application so we need a bridge so ADO.net is you can call it as a bridge between that data source and application so ADO.net mainly use the two DLLs we will be using uh, when we go to the Visual Studio and doing the, some practical implementation we'll be seeing the some DLLs so you will see the two DLLs I will be using main uh, system dot data dot DLL and if I will would be dealing with some XML for data source so I would be using XML for SQL, uh, we will be using uh, some other thing. So we will discuss it later. So you can have a uh, look on this diagram. This data source means your database. And this is your app. It could be your application. It could be on window, Windows form, web forms, or any uh, MVC or anything. But uh, your application needs uh, there is some communication bridge between this there's a communication bridge required between the application and the data source application can di cannot directly take the data from the database cannot understand the sql language your web forms or win forms uh, or your any web pages razor pages cannot directly understand your sql queries so there there should be some communication bridge that is we have adio.net so we already have covered this topic entity framework before and we all know that uh, entity framework is an ORM and it's advanced technology comparative to the .NET, uh, ADO.NET that we are studying right now. But in some of the cases, ADO.NET is fine. So let's compare both of the things that to what is the difference between the ADO.NET and the entity framework. So the point of, uh, the we'll consider some points. Uh, point one, let's consider the control and the complexity. So we'll discuss about the ADO.NET first and then entity framework about the control and complexity. So ADO.NET gives you more control over the database operation, but you don't need to, but you need to write the more code. So what happens when we uh, use the ADO.NET, we can have, a, you know, more access to the database. We can write the more complex queries easily when using the database. You can, even you can use some DDL command as well while, while using the ADO.NET. But the only problem is that you have to write the more code and handle all the logic and you have to handle details like opening and closing the connection. But in Entity Framework, these things get abstracted. It abstracts away many details simplifying code tasks. You just have to, you know, uh, it gives you a very easy way to code. It gives you the more high level and automates some of the complexities. So, for if you see the entity framework wins here in the control and complexity. But if you have the more, con if you want the more control over the database, you use ADO.NET. It depends on your use case. Now, uh, the second thing is object oriented versus SQL centric. So, as we discussed, that if you have a more, uh, you know, command or you are more confident on the SQL, and your application is uh, like uh, the requirements such like that you have more complex queries. So, don't go for the entity framework. Uh, you should go for, if you have uh, some complex uh, scenario that can only be handled by the SQL queries, 
in that case edu.net is the right choice so edu.net requires you to think in terms of the sql commands and work with the data set and the data readers directly so don't get worried about these data set and data readers we will be discussing it in our upcoming videos all uh, right so the next thing is ef ef uh, lets you the work with the data if it was like, uh, like object in your programming language making it more natural for the developer uh, accustomed to object oriented programming the third thing is querying the data edu.net involves writing the sql queries or if your application has more stored procedures and maybe you get some there's a chance you get some legacy application where the store procedures was written so in that case ef is not the right choice you have to choose the edu.net and uh, if uh, if you are going with the entity uh, framework so what you have to do you have to learn the link as well we already know this link we have been using in our previous videos of the thing but let's suppose some of the guys who don't know the link and he only know the sql queries and his application has a lots of store procedure he's expert in store procedures and sql so edu.net is the right choice for him At the fourth point we can discuss about the mapping between the database and the code so edu.net requires the manual mapping of the database result to the object so as we already discussed if you use the edu.net we have to do lots of thing manually we have to write the more code so the mapping is also one of the thing you will get the data from the database and from the raw sql queries and you have to map to the object you will create some entity then you will have to map manually by like data say uh, you will get the data into the data set and into the data set there could be a multiple data tables and in the data tables you could have some columns and you will be mapping to each column to each property that will be you know some long process and there could be a chance to, to that you can make mistake uh, while the, for the ef you don't have to do anything manually we have uh, like uh, it directly maps to the object so ef the code development is really easy and you know very fast but in edu.net if you want to go to the core level then use the edu.net so the purpose uh, i as i already mentioned that the purpose of you know learning is that that someone can ask us uh, about this thing in an interview so we should know about that okay so let's flip towards some practical things but uh, let's before going to the practical thing we have to know some basic terminologies we already uh, we we discuss in the la, uh, you know in this 7 or 8 minutes about that what is edu.net and how in which scenario we have we, we can use this edu.net over the ef now we are going in some more details uh, like okay you can see the diagram over here i took it from inter uh, from the internet edu.net data provides an object you have to learn this terms so you can see this is your dotnet application it could be anything your web console or windows form and this is your database and your database could be anything sql server oracle oldb and odsp so for different database we might have uh, different providers so these are called the providers you see the system.data.sql client and oracle client and this these are the oracle these are so for we will be using here the sql server uh we can use uh, oracle as well but right now in on my system the sql server is installed and you will find the more jobs uh, of the this edu.net is usually uh, you know people use with the sql server mostly so you can see the downside here with the providers we have some object these are called the uh, data provider objects that connection command data reader and data adapter and separately we have a data set we will be discussing all these thing in our upcoming videos and the next video will be going with the connection thing with the practical ex uh, example and then we will be discussing this command data reader and adapter and the difference between them so once you are confident with that maybe in the interview someone ask you you will be able to answer this question so i hope you like this video if you really like this video then please like share and subscribe and please your like and comment motivates me to make more videos i'm making the more this video for the beginners and like same the people who are like me who always are, you know seeking the new jobs so they can get prepared of this so take care take care